Previous week we talk about uh, four Bhave actions, right? Four Bhave actions. So I think uh, Bhave actions are very important because we are always talking, we are always associating with the people, right? Uh, it is important to watch out, right? Our Bhave action. Then uh, this is a, a very beautiful soda. Abhya Raja Kumara Soda. Majmani Kaya Soda number 58. <coughs> Abhya, Prince Abhya. He is a, the son of King Bimbisara. And he is disciple of um, Nikanda Natapoda. You know, the founder of Jainism. And uh, when Prince Abhya visit Nikanda, and Nikanda suggested that you go and meet with the Gautama Bodha and debate with him. So he teach the way he should do. So when you meet with the Gautama Bodha, you ask the question, do you, do you talk uh, uh, unwelcome and disagreeable speeches? So he will say yes or no, right? Only two yes or no's. If he say yes, that me taught to him that you are no different with the ordinary people. Ordinary people also say unwelcome and unpleasant speeches, right? You also speak. You are not holy person. <laughs> but if he say no, that means he is lying. The reason is he said to Devadatta. As you all know that Devadatta creates kids in the Sangha and make a lot of problems. So the Buddha taught to Devadatta. So you accumulated a lot of uh, hideous crimes. You will go to hell. So by hearing that, Devadatta is not happy, right? Not happy. So that means the Buddha used very, very strong and also unpleasant and awakened speeches to Devadatta, right? So if he say no, that means he is lying. If he say yes, you can say that you are not holy person. No different with the ordinary person, right? Then um, uh, Prince Abhaya. Uh, agreed to do that. So on that day, he visited uh, Willowana monasteries where the Buddha was staying. So by that time, the Buddha was preaching a uh, big crowd. Then after finished preaching, it is too late, right? Maybe one of the reasons is he is afraid to debate in the monasteries. For that reason, he invited the Buddha. Buddha, please come to my house for lunch, together with the three or four monks. Not so many, do not bring so many monks. Maybe he's afraid. <laughs> so, the next day, uh, the Buddha visit with the uh, two or three monks and after donating food to the Buddha with the respect, respectfully, by himself, Prince Abhya asked the question, taught by his teacher. 
the Buddha, do you see awakened and disagreeable speeches? The Buddha said that. In your question, I cannot say right away, so I cannot say one sided answer. I cannot say ekansa pyagarinia in Pali, ekansa pyagarinia. So I cannot, I cannot answer your question right away, right? But actually in Buddhism, we have a, uh, the Buddha talk about four type of questions, right? Some question need to answer right away, yes or no, right? Some question need to, need to ask the question to the listener, uh, to the questioner, right? By asking question, so in this way, need to clarify, right? Another question is um, uh, the question. Uh, uh, how to say? No need to answer, right? So the question people will ask the question, and the Buddha will not say anything, right? Just leave it as it is, because uh, sometimes some questions are very tricky. So you cannot say yes or no, right? Yes or no. So actually, normally I. We always give an example. Bhikkhu uh, Nyanamali give a very beautiful example uh, between husband and wife, right? Husband and wife. I will ask the husband, did you beat your wife last night? Did you beat your wife last night? <laughs> no, right? No. That means you beat your wife other night? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot answer yes or no, right? <laughs> Very tricky question. Yeah? Very tricky question. So there are some questions like this in Pali Canon. We have a 10 questions, right? 10 or 16, I forgot. Okay, I need to check. Actually, uh, I think these are very important. Maybe uh, when we are learning dependent originations, I, we were, I, knew, I, I think, if I, may rem rem if I remember, I will touch on that. Because these are connected with the soul theory, and also not only soul theory but also mostly mostly are related to the soul theory, right? Just like that, is the body soul? You cannot say yes or no, right? Is how about uh, the mind? You cannot say yes or no, right? Like this. So there are some questions very tricky. So here the Buddha said that um, for this question, for your question, I cannot say one-sided answer. So Prince Abhya is very, very happy to hear that. He thought that the Buddha would say yes or no, but the Buddha didn't say yes or no. Here the Buddha used ekansapyagaraniya by asking question, right? By asking question. So by that time, by that time, a uh, young baby is sleeping on his on his uh, on his lap, right? On his lap. And the Buddha asked the question. Suppose your baby swallowed the stick, stick, or pepe. What will you do? If you take out stick from from his mouth, you know. You'll be crying a lot, right? Very painful. Very painful. So the, the prince up here answered the question. Actually, if my baby swallows stiff, I have to take out, right? If I not if if I cannot take out easily, then I will hold uh, the head of my baby with one one hand, then I will take it out, right? Even if it draw black. Right? It draw blood. It was very painful for the baby. But why he is doing that? And the prince obviously said that because auto compassion, right? If I do not take out the stiff or pepe from the mouth of my baby, so it will be a very serious problem, right? Serious problem. Even if he is crying even if it draws blood. So we have to take it out. Why? The Buddha asked. 
because of compassion and loving kindness toward my baby, right? And the Buddha said that just like that. And the Buddha also sometimes speak and welcome and disagreeable speeches. The reason is out of compassion, right? Sometimes the Buddha may use very strong, uh, very strong speeches, just like uh, to venerable, uh, venerable um, devoted, right? Devoted. Actually, there are many examples as well. Many examples as well. So the Buddha, sometimes the Buddha use uh, very strong word. So to let them know what they are doing is very serious, right? Very serious. You, they don't have to do it, right? So, so one of the examples is the, one of the men called Sati, and he believed that so, you know, actually he doesn't use the word Atta, how Atta man, he just used Vainyana. This Vainyana uh, go from life after another, right? One life after another. Even though he used the word Vainyana, what we are using all the time, right? Even though he used the word Vainyana, but he believed that there is a type of Vainyana that lasts forever, that cannot die, that lasts permanently, right? So that Vainyana moves to one life to another. If you die this life, so that Vainyana lived, right? And moved to another life. So actually, this is a so theory, right? So theory. For that reason, the Buddha examined. What do you mean by Vinyana? Then he, the Buddha cross question. But it is a the theory, so theory, right? So theory. For that reason, the Buddha said, Moga Purisa, Moga Purisa, hollow man, good for nothing. Moga Purisa, very strong, useless, right? Useless person. So the Buddha used such a very strong word. So the reason is uh, the theory of soul theory is very dangerous in our practice, in higher practice, right? And normal day, day to day life stay okay. But if you want to follow four noble truths, if you want to understand dependent originations, soul theory is very serious, right? Very serious. Uh, actually, I, I share one time here. So when uh, Dalai Lama was asked, one of the Christian priests asked Dalai Lama, can you explain emptiness? So Dalai Lama said, no, 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 none of your business. <laughs> none of your business. Don't ask. Don't ask me. So the reason is the idea of emptiness, the teachings of emptiness, totally different from the idea of God, creator God, right? If the Lai Lama answer the meaning of emptiness and Christian priest, he will lose his faith to the God. For that reason he said, no, 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 none of your business. <laughs> very, very serious, very serious, right? So actually, uh, the emptiness and uh, theory of soul, right? But in, in, uh, in Buddhism, we we, there's, uh, there's an emptiness, there's no permanent soul, no permanent entity, right? So what I mean is uh, uh, the Bora contained by using a very strong word to sati, right? Sati, because it's very serious, right? Sometimes, of course, the Bora said that sometimes the Bora use and welcome and disagreeable speeches. Why? The reason is out of compassion and loving kindness, right? In the case of Devadatta, but of course Devadatta may not like it, but it benefit for sasana, for other people, right? Don't do like him. If you do like him, then you will have to face all these problems like this, right? And very serious. So the Buddha have to use and work and disagree with speech at some time, right? And this soda is very important. Apya Raja Kumara Soda, six type of speech. The Tagada utters only two type of speech out of six. Only two type of speech out of six. 
normally we are using six types of speech. <laughs> One of them, right? <laughs> but the Buddha used only two, right? But we can follow, right? We can follow the footsteps of the Buddha. So the Buddha used only two types of speech, and we also have to follow the Buddha footsteps, right? So in this way, we become like a Buddha, right? Like a Buddha. So yeah, the Tagata utters only two types of speech out of six, right? Number three and number six, right? Actually, in Soda study class, I mean, we are studying this Soda. <laughs> I have already shared, right? So I then we have to repeat next Thursday, next Thursday. Sometime after teaching, bit of my class, teaching and Soda class, not very, how to say, it's just repeating, it's not very good for speakers. <laughs> repeating after one year is okay. <laughs> repeating after one month is something, and then the listener, they, they are not interested, they are here, right? So anyway, I think benefit, repetition, and I see listening, uh, okay, right? Number one, some speeches are not true, right? And not beneficial, not pleasant to others, right? I think mean, this is the best, it's the worst, the worst speech, right? The worst speeches. Not true, they create a story which is not true, also not beneficial for them, not, finish, uh, not beneficial for the listener, and also it's not pleasant to hear not pleasant to hear, right? So the Tagada does not utter such a one, right? We also shouldn't speak such a one, right? Not true, not beneficial, not pleasant to others, right? Number two, it is truth, what you say is truth, number one, but it's not beneficial and not pleasant to hear. I think that is very important. Even though it is truth, if it is not beneficial, not pleasant to the listeners, we shouldn't control, right? We, well, we, we should control our mouth, right? We should control our mouth. Sometimes you have a revenge or sometimes you have anger. What you know is truth. A truth about, a truth about that person, right? But you know that by talking, what you know is not beneficial, not pleasant to hear. So we have to control, right? We have to control. Sometimes we have to do it, especially outro anger, right? Outro anger. But you will, you will give a skill that what I'm mean talking is truth. <laughs> Actually, based on the truth, truthfulness, right? Actually, even though truth uh, is not beneficial, not pleasant to hear, right? And then uh, such what we normally say out of anger. So we have to control our mouth, not to speak such a one. Number three. Number one, it is truth. Number two, it's beneficial for the speaker and listeners. But unpleasant to others. So just like that, the Buddha taught to Bhikkhu uh, Sati, right? Mang Sati. And the Buddha taught to uh, the Buddha taught to um, Devadatta, right? So when you study Vinaya Pirika, there are many examples, right? So the Buddha normally use Moga Bodhisa, and there are many other terms, right? Asaja Bodhiya, right? So these are not where coming, not, not pleasant to hear. When the Buddha was talking to uh, Bhikkhu Sati, he was listening, you know, his head like this. He's <laughs> not happy to hear, right? But, number one, what the Buddha taught is truth. Number two, what the Buddha taught is beneficial for the sasana, for the other big other minds, right? For that reason, the Buddha use the Buddha use truth beneficial, right? 
But even though it is true, even though it is beneficial, the most important thing is timing. Here also, timing is very important, right? Even though it is true, it is beneficial, the Buddha evaluate a good timing, right? Whether it is a good time or untimely, right? A bad time, right? Bad time. So the target know the time to use such speech, right? So when we are le- uh, last week we talk about uh, five criteria of a good speech, right? So the first one is timely, a good timing, right? For that reason, it's important. Timely, I think knowing, uh, knowing the time is number one. Mindfulness and number two, wisdom. Combination of two, right? We have to be mindful and we have to think carefully whether it is a good time or a bad time, right? So the Buddha used such one, number three, right? Especially number three is very important for the leaders, for those who want to become a leaders. Especially for the parents, right? Parents and teachers. So, um, so they have to use some time and pleasant speeches to the listener, right? Some people are afraid to talk, right? So they don't want other people like them, uh, does not like them, right? For that reason, they, uh, they practice silence, right? Even though it is true, even though it is beneficial, they are not telling openly, they close their mouth, right? I think it's not true, it's not the way where the Buddha talks. Of course, every speech must come from out of compassion, metta, right? Loving kindness, and mind not loving kindness. So the mind five criteria, right? The last one is the mind not loving kindness, must come from loving kindness. Even though what you say is very strong, and I'm blessed to hear, it must be true, then beneficial, then you have to speak up, right? Speak up. So for that reason, a good leader, so they will speak up openly, right? Even though they will lost their reputation, even though they, are, they lost their fame, right? So they will stay do that. Number three, right? Very important for the parents, teachers, and the leader of the country, and the leader of the community, right? It's very important. Otherwise, so I think uh, there will be a lot of problems, right? Number four, and truth, and beneficial, but pleasant to others. Normally, uh, we like to talk number, number five, number four, right? We want to talk, we want to talk normally. It's not true, not beneficial for both speaker and listener, but pleasant to hear, right? The listener also like it, just like the idea chatter, right? Just like the idea chatter, we are talking chit chat, no end, right? Just like a parrot, right? Some people talking, talking, talking. <laughs> they don't have any particular purpose, right? But from one subject to another, they are jumping, one, one subject to another, right? Jumping. So, some of them may not be truth, right, and beneficial, but pleasant to hear, right, pleasant to hear, just like a joke, right, just like a joke, telling joke, right. Number five, it is truth, but not beneficial, right, it is truth, not beneficial, and pleasant to hear. So I think that if you, uh, after learning all this one, uh, we can make conclusion that number one, must be truth. Number two, must be beneficial, right? And number three, timing. So we have to look at three criteria, right? Three criteria. But when we are talking about in another soda, we will talk about five criteria, right? Five criteria. But we can summarize only three, right? Must be truth. Must be beneficial, uh, must be a good timing, timely, right? Three. But here, even though it is truth, not beneficial, right? Not beneficial. Send news. 
the information that you have, right? It is truth, right? It is truth, and people like it, right? People like it, just like uh, uh, in uh, in the Western country, there is a um, paparazzi, right? Paparazzi. So they normally follow celebrities, and they find out it's their secret things, right? It is truth. <laughs> it is truth. People want to hear, right? People want to hear. People like it, right? So, but it's not beneficial, right? It's not really beneficial. So even though we know the secrets of those celebrities, what is the point, right? What is the point? So, but this is the human nature. We like it, right? Especially paparazzi and journalists, 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 right? So they want to uncover or they, they want to uncover the secrets of celebrity, right? But by seeing, by reading, the secret of celebrity is no use, right? We cannot do anything but human, human behavior. We want to know it, right? We want to know it. So, normally, uh, the Buddha do not talk such a way, right? Even though it is true, people like it, but not beneficial, right? Not beneficial. And the last one is, number one, it is truth. Number two, beneficial. Number three, pleasant to hear. And three characteristics, right? Pleasant to hear, three characteristics. Even though truth, beneficial, pleasant to hear, the Buddha knows the time, right? To speak such a one. Yeah, timing is also very important. Timing is very important. The Buddha look, look at the timing, right? So there are many stories that the Buddha was, the Buddha was a waiting a good time, right? To teach the Dharma. There are many cases, right? There are many cases. One of them is the Vagali, right? Vagali. Bhikkhu Vagali, he left the Buddha. He went to see the Buddha all the time, right? Wherever the Buddha go, he will follow, right? The Buddha knew that it's not good, right? It's not good. But the Buddha was take, uh, waiting the time. Suddenly, the Buddha went to Rajaka. By the time the Buddha was staying in Savati, then the Buddha take a long trip, 200 kilometer, Rajaka. By that time, Wakali is ill, right? Gravely ill. The Buddha is taking a long trip. If he follow, he will die halfway. <coughs> but cannot do. For that reason, he have to stay back, right? The Buddha went to Rajakaha. But, Vakali cannot stand, right? He went to see the Buddha. For that reason, with the help of his fellow men, he followed the Buddha. Even though he is seriously ill, right? So when Vakali arrived, Rajakaha, he even couldn't come to Wuluwana monasteries. But the Buddha had to go there, right? The Buddha preached a very famous Dhamma, right? Your Dhamma Ambassador, so Ambassador, who understands the Dhamma, sees me, right? Just trying to understand the Dhamma. You will see the Buddha, right? You will see what kind of passing the Buddha is, right? Of course, if you be cancelled the banner, you will see very clearly, right? You will see very clearly, and you will have a unwavering faith to the Buddha. There is no such a teacher in the world other than the Buddha, right? So what I want to say is, the Buddha is waiting the time, right? The Buddha just preached in timely speeches, right? Timely speeches. So that is very important. Even though it is truth, beneficial and pleasant to hear, need to wait time, right? Need to wait a good time in. So I think uh, by looking at all the six types of speeches, I think two are very important. Three are very important. Must be truth, must be beneficial, must be timely, right? Timely. Then only we should speak. But sometimes, 
we need to tell the people the speeches that are not pleasant to hear. They will not like it. They will definitely will not like it, right? But we have to speak. The reason is out of compassion. Must be out of compassion, right? But even though our uh, truth beneficial is timely, but if you're talking out of anger, inner hate, also not good. <laughs> so we have to look at earlier soda, right? Earlier soda. Must come from, uh, must be a minor, must speak. Uh, a minor loving kindness, right? Minor loving kindness. So these are six type of speech. Out of six, the Buddha taught only two, right? Only two. Any question? Okay. Yeah, yes. Uh, what if mentioned earlier regarding the speech? The speech may be uh it's not beneficial, right? But then it's pleasant and it's true. But then the non beneficial we have a party. Now the paradise or the journalist who circulate this sort of news, it increases the circulation to this paper. So in this situation, two benefits. Yeah, they benefit. Yes. How about the reader? Huh? But, uh, the reader to get the human being or his source of news or better intrinsic value because we may be not. The superficial source of the human being. Right? So the benefit depends on which part of the human But as well as the journalism of Haifa, I create good news, I have a good situation, I have good sales, I have a promotion, I have a bonus. Maybe it could be wrong, I have a good also. Life, I think it's a good point. Are, are yeah, yeah. Good point. Truth, pleasant to hear, but not beneficial, right? I think it's a different dimension. Right? Of course, we have to look at uh, both sides, especially the, the listener side, right? So you are a jet speaker. <coughs> uh, if benefit to the listener, of course it should be okay, right? But you increase your uh, circulation, right? Uh, the copy of the newspaper, right? You can increase benefit for you, but uh, by the the reader will read the story. It takes a lot of time. If they do not get anything from the story, right? I think is a we can consider as it not not good, right? Not good. For that reason, the Buddha didn't talk. Truth beneficial. I mean, beneficial is one of the characteristics, right? Actually, our intention should be uh, so we have to focus on the listeners, right? Listener must benefit from our from our speech, right? From our speech. Question? Okay. Sorry. Apeya raja. Ah, ah, yeah, Raja. Oh, sorry, Kumara. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Paul. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget that. Kumara, Kumara is a prince. Oh, sorry, Kumara is a uh, uh, young man. Raja is a king, right? Raja Kumara means prince. Prince. Actually, in uh, Sri Lanka, India, they have a lot of names. Kumar, right? Raja Kumar or Kumar come from Kumara. Yeah, Kumar. Okay, so uh, here I want to touch what line, right? What line? Normally, white line is very common. So here, white line means it's not truth, right? It's not truth. It's not truth. But it's beneficial to the listeners, right? And also, welcome to hear, pleasant to hear. Support your mother is gravely A, right? Gravely A. So she has, uh, she's going to die, right? Going to die. Her son lives in the United States. So, so they informed to come back, right? But her son haven't. Uh, bought a ticket yet, right? Then uh, the mother asks, 
Where is my sand? Where is my sand? And the daughter, the daughter answered, She is on the way. He is on the way. <laughs> he is on the way. Actually, he even haven't bought a ticket yet. <laughs> There's a white line, right? It's not, it's not truth, but beneficial, right? So the mother, the dying mother, he liked it. And he went to here, right? He went to here. So I think these are white lines. So there are many other things as well, right? Many other things as well. So you might say you are beautiful, even though you are ugly. <laughs> Normally it happens in the social media. So when people post a picture, they will always say, very lovely. You became elegant. <laughs> like this, right? These are white lines. So this white line uh, great precepts. Sorry? Uh, the precept itself is telling white lines uh, will break the precept, one of the five precepts for speech. Very good question. I think, uh, but of course, telling lie, telling lie, see, I think that is a uh, break precept. But of course, um, under the name of telling line is a breaking precept but there are a lot of things right number one beneficial to the listeners number two they like it right they like it so we have to compare so by telling white line I think you might accumulate both right both good and bad <laughs> both good and bad I want to say that right say that so here, are the, here I want to share. I want to share a very important message here. So here, skillfulness in teaching. In Mahayana, it's very common. Uh, uh, upaya kosana. Actually, I can't pronounce how, to, how they pronounce Mahayana. They they, they use this uh, word very often. Upaya kosana. Or I don't know. Very common skillfulness in teaching, right? If you just look at on surface level, it looks like the Buddha is lying, telling lies. But actually it's not. Actually it's not. So for that reason, when you are using a white line, so we have to use skillfulness in teaching. Right? Skillfulness in teaching. So in this way you can avoid breaking precept. I think you can buy pregnant precept. Later, I wish, uh, maybe, um, yeah, I want to, before I talk, I talk about this, I want to share a, one of the, how do I say, I want, I want to share, I will give you one story. <coughs> I think many, many of you know that, KC, right, horse trainer, KC, horse trainer. So he is famous, famous for horse training, right? People, when they want to train their horse, so they will give it to Casey, horse trainer. He will train the horse, right? Even though a wine horse became, uh, how do you say, it became very gentle and also very tame, right? Very tame. So one day, Casey, horse trainer, visited the Buddha. And the Buddha asked the question, Casey, you are famous for trainer of horse, right? You can tame horses. Very famous for that, right? Which method you use to train the horses? And Casey said that I, I use a uh, gentle method. For ho some horses, I will use gentle method. But if I cannot tame that horse, in a gentle way, I will use harsh method, right? Harsh method by beating, right? By slapping like this. So the Buddha said that if you cannot train the horse either gentle way or harsh way, what will you do? The case is that, that I kill the horse. I kill the horse. Why? The reason is, if I cannot change that horse both ways, 
uh, both gender and harsh way, and my popularity, my fame will be tarnished as a teacher, right? So I kill, right? Then I will inform the horse owner, I kill your horse. Because your horse is useless, right? Cannot train, <laughs> cannot tame or cannot train, right? Then KC asked the question. Boda, you are famous for Bodhisattva Masarati, the trainer of, uh, the tamer of both men and devas, Bodhisattva Masarati, right? You can tame the people, you can tame the deva, you can tame the Brahma. Which method do you use? The Buddha use. Sometimes I use the gentle way, gentle method. Sometimes I use harsh method. So what is gender method? So gender method means do good things. If you do good things, you can go to heaven. You can become Brahma. You can attain a bar, right? But what is harsh <coughs> method? Don't do all these unwholesome actions. Don't do unwholesome deeds. If you do so, you will go to hell. <laughs> That's harsh, right? People doesn't want hell and uh, awful destinations, right? So if you are doing all these and all the actions, you will go to hell. You're very harsh, right? Very hard. The Casey hot trainer said that the Bora, if you cannot tame the passing both way, what will you do? The Bora said, I care that passing. <laughs> The Buddha said, I killed that person. So Casey became surprised, right? The Buddha, you are not supposed to kill that person. You always say Panadipada, right? To refrain from Panadipada. And the Buddha said that Casey, killing in Buddhism me, we ignore the person. We regard that person. That person should not be uh, treated as a, the one who should be tamed, right? Right? So the Buddha used that method. Ignoring the passing, and the Buddha regard the passing as the one who cannot trade, right? So consider as a killing and Buddhism, right? Killing and Buddhism. But here, I me, mean, if you just read the first paragraph, I'm him or I'm her, that means the Buddha is telling lie. Look like the Buddha is telling lie, right? Normally the Buddha, is, the Buddha will not kill, right? So the Buddha used the Buddha used this one, skillfulness in teaching, right? The Buddha is very skillful. So we have a lot of many examples, many examples. Look at the story of Angulimala, right? So even though the Buddha is walking, so when uh, Angulimala asks, "Stop, stop," the Buddha says, "I have stopped." I have stopped. But actually the Buddha is walking. So in Gulimala think that this man is telling lie. So actually, in those days, as a religious person, telling a lie is very serious, right? For that reason, even though the Buddha is walking, but he said I have stopped. But it looked like in Gulimala Din is telling a lie, right? But the Buddha used skillfulness in teaching. The reason is the Buddha already eradicate all the defilements in his mind. So in his in that way, so the Buddha stop Sansar. He will not have any rebirth in his life. In that way, stop. But in his mind, in his mind, and in the minds of the Buddha, the Buddha use, right? Skillfulness in teaching. The Buddha uh, when the Buddha uh, said, I stop. That means he stopped sansara, right? He stopped sansara. Sometimes, so when we are, when you want to tell line, when you want to tell line, you <laughs> giving a guideline. <laughs> Sometimes you have to tell line, right? White line. So when you tell a white line, you have to keep it in your mind, right? Skillfulness in teachings. 
Skebuna in speaking, right? Skebuna in speaking. Then I will take uh, that example, right? That example. So the sand had been bought a ticket, right? But he will definitely will come back to Singapore, but the mother is going to die tonight. Definitely the sand will not, will not come, right? But when you are talking, he is coming, right? He is coming. It's not telling lie. No, yeah, it's not telling lie. But if you say he is on the way, it can be a white lie. But in your mind, when you think, he will definitely wake up. He is on the process, right? He is trying, trying. By thinking in that way in your mind, I think you can apply breaking precept. <laughs> Very thin, right? Very thin. Yeah. So, in a way, uh, he encourages not to speak wisely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, skillfulness, right? wisely, wisely, very beautiful, I think. Then, now, uh, I will give you another, uh, I will take another, uh, the same example. <coughs> Even though, uh, I don't know how to say, <coughs> the girl is not beautiful, ugly. That you can say beautiful, right? So, but in your mind, when you are when you are using the word beautiful, you are not indicating the appearance. You are indicating the mind, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but in your mind, when you are telling beautiful, but in your mind you refer to the mind, right? But the listener will think you are talking about her appearance, right? I think it's the way and the skillfulness in speaking. So just like the Buddha too, we should we can we can use it, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a famous when uh, two two guys are driving. <clears throat> two guys are driving and one of the kind uh, look at uh, uh, a pedestrian who is a teacher and he said you are beautiful the teacher look at I'm very happy actually the teacher is not not, not beautiful very ugly <laughs> <laughs> the guy who is driving surprisingly asked why you are why you're talking you are beautiful it's very ugly why you said that? <laughs> <laughs> then this guy is playing. Think about it. After hearing you are beautiful, so that teacher will be very happy. I'm sure that today he will not blame, he will not yell at his student today. <laughs> her students, her students, right? Because she has a, a good mind at the time. You know? A good mood. In a good mood. Because she heard that she is beautiful, right? So in the eyes of other people, she also knows that she is not. But on that day, she might think that, wow, there is one person who says, I'm beautiful, right? Became very happy the whole day, right? So the whole day, she will not be angry to her students, right? She will not be angry to her family, right? Like this. So actually, the guy is very, how to say, uh, of course, white lie, right? White lie. But we don't know what, what he's thinking at the time, right? So, you are beautiful, that me, not only appearance, right? We can indicate the, the mind elsewhere, right? The mind elsewhere. Of course, by that time, must be very honest, right? Must be very honest. People, most people are not honest, right? Not honest. When this is something. This is something, right? Probably people like it. People like, um, so when they are praised, right? When they are praised, people like it. But also, they also know whether you are honest or dishonest. <laughs> right? So here I think, if we, are, if we practice carefulness in our speech, right? And then we can avoid breaking the 
uh, break in the seal, right? Break in the seal. It's not truth, but beneficial and uh, welcome to hear, right? But we have to, uh, how to say, we have to think very carefully. When we are talking white line all the time, if the listener discover, they will not believe you. It's very, very dangerous, right? Very dangerous. For that reason, even the white line, the Buddha do not use. But the Buddha use skillfulness in teaching, right? Skillfulness. The Buddha is not telling line to Ingolimala, but to teach, right? And the Buddha use a wise, a wise wisdom, right? A wisdom. <clears throat> okay, I want to share two story. The story of Yesa and his father. So the Buddha preached the Machaka Buddha at the first sermon to a group of five men. Then after listening the first sermon, they became sort of Pana and the Buddha preached second sermon. Nata Lakana Soda, right? Then after hearing second sermon, they became Arahan, right? So at that moment, uh, one of the rich men, uh, the son of rich men, called Yesa. You know, they they have a mature power, I mean, profession, right? So they have accumulated a lot of profession or power me in their previous life, right? So at that moment, the son of the rich man, called Yesa, he became uh, disgusted and became fed up with all the enjoyment, right? So the earlier time he was enjoying, right? He has three houses. One for rainy season, one for the cold season, one for the hot season. A lot of attendance, a lot of case, right? He's enjoying the, his, his life. But on that particular day, he fell with all these enjoyment. Then he decided to renounce all these when going alone. He's looking, he went to look at the purpose of life, the aim of life. For that reason, he renounced night time and go straight to Isi Patana, where the Buddha was staying. The Buddha knew that he is coming, and for that reason, he was waiting. It's early in the morning. So the Buddha was waiting, sitting under the tree. <coughs> yes, sir, there is no purpose where to go, right? So just he is uh, complaining, where is the purpose of life, right? Where is the purpose of life? And when the Buddha hear that, uh, then I can answer you the purpose of life. The yes up, surprise, right? Now he met a person who say, right? The essence of life he can, he can get, right? Then the Buddha preached the sermon, and yes up became sort of banner. Became sort of banner, right? And the Buddha gave the father teachings and by that time Yesa is contemplating what the Buddha taught by sitting here by the Buddha by sitting here by the Buddha he already became a bhikkhu, right? a bhikkhu. so he was meditating here by the Buddha so by that time so when uh, in the morning they find out that their son is not here, not, not in the house, right? So all the family, they worry and they want to find out uh, different places, right? So yes, father, uh, he, he chose to go to Isi Padana, that side, right? So he saw the Bora and he, he is asking the Bora, did you see it was not the Yemen where in such a way, like that, in such in, in such a such a way, right? And the Buddha said this one. Where Hausura sit down? As you know, he's very worried, right? Very worried. He went just went to uh, find out, right? His son. He is a ruthless, right? Ruthless. But the Buddha said, Where Hausura sit down? <laughs> but he cannot sit down, right? 
But the Buddha said that if you sit down here, you might see your sand. Oh, I forgot. I forgot to tell one thing. So the Buddha knew that his father is coming. And the Buddha created a miracle, performed a miracle in such a way that the Yasa cannot be seen by her son, by his son, or by, by his father. The Buddha created, the Buddha performed a miracle, supernatural power, in such a way that uh, his father cannot see Yasa. Right? Cannot see Yasa. For that reason, when his father approached the Buddha, he said, he asked, did you see uh, uh, the Yemen, right, in this appearance? Well, of course, the Buddha should see, yes. <laughs> but the Buddha didn't say, <laughs> where, Hansura, sit down. <laughs> if you sit down here, you might see your son. <laughs> Actually, the use is very important. You might see your son. It's not a telling line. Right? It's not a telling line. But the Buddha did not answer the question directly. Right? Directly. The Buddha used skillfulness in teaching. Right? He wanted to teach. Sit down. If you sit down here, you might see your son. You know, he is looking for his son. For that reason, uh, the rich man think that. Wow, if I'm around here, I might see. Might be my sign is around here. <laughs> For that reason, he sit down and the, bro the Buddha preached the sermon and his father became sort of bad. Then only the Buddha performed another miracle to show his son. <laughs> Actually, his son is uh, sitting nearby, right? By listening, uh, the Dhamma taught to his father, the Yasa became Arahant. Yasa became Arahant, right? So in that way, you, you know that Hasura became sort of Bana. So when he see his son, no longer worry, no longer, uh, how to say, feeling. Even he is happy, right? So he became the man, the disciple of the Buddha. Because he himself became sort of bad, right? So here, I think, uh, what the Buddha used is skillfulness in teaching. Very skillful, right? Very skillful. So this is from uh, Vinaya Pitaka. For those who want to read the whole story, the book of Display, right? Volume 4, page number 24. Right? You can read. Another story is the most famous one, story of Kisa Gaudami, right? As you all know that uh, Kisa Gaudami is a, a very thin, I would say that ugly, a little bit ugly, I think. For that reason, uh, and also poor, she's poor. She is selling in the market, selling uh, charcoal, charcoal, right? Charcoal. So, she's very poor and very thin, a little bit ugly. Um, one day, <coughs> uh, a, rich, uh, a rich man uh, came to the market and lo looking for uh, something that he went, right? When he saw a young lady, a thin lady, a very thin, we, we can call it not thin, lean, right? Lean. Lean. Very, very skinny, skinny lady. Skinny lady. So you saw a skinny lady, skin, skinny girl, who is selling gold, right? Selling, uh, how to say, what is it? Uh, how to say, gold, like this. We, we, normally we have a gold. Go bar, right? Go bar, right? Go bar. He saw, surprisingly, he saw a young girl, a skinny girl, who is selling go bar in the market. But he separating all the go bar on the ground, right? On the ground. Surprise. And he asked, 
Why are you selling goba in the market like this? People will steal your goba, right? People will take it and run away. And skinny care also surprised. Are you selling goba? <laughs> Actually, she is selling charcoal. Charcoal, charcoal. Because of the commentary, the commentary, commentary said that because of her previous karma, all charcoal became goba. But she does not know. <laughs> she does not know. <laughs> But the, uh, the rich man, he know it, right? For that reason, he's asking, why are you selling a very expensive goba here, right? And skinny girl also, oh, for that reason, Kisa called me. Her name is called me. Kisa me skinny or lean, right? So, surprise. Then, the rich man, uh, the son of a rich man, and he believed that he has a lot of kusala, a lot of hosts and deed, right? For that reason, and, uh, he got married with a skinny and ugly girl, right? Ugly girl. Because of the goba, right? Because of the goba. Maybe koteka, right? Uh, the sign of Ima is a koteka. <laughs> koteka, koteka, right? So, they got married. But because of her previous karma, her parents in law do not love her. Always complaining, always finding fault. So she's not happy, right? But so she also doesn't want to divorce, divorce, right? Divorce. The reason is if she divorces, no chance to get. It has been again. <laughs> so, but she practice patient. Uh, she uh, she practice patient, right? Patient, patient. One day, she have a, uh, she pregnant, and she was born a young boy, a baby boy. So from that time on, her parents in law left her so much because of. The baby boy, right? Baby boy. For that reason, uh, the baby boy is her life, so she take care of her young young boy, right? But one day, suddenly, that boy die because of some diseases. Of course, she became hopeless, gone crazy. She's asking people, "Is there any cure for my dead son?" Any cure for my dead son? And Bibi say, No, your son died, died, cannot cure, right? That person cannot be cured. Then she, is, she go one place to another, asking for cure for the death, right? But Bibi, San Bibi, uh, how do you say, how do you say, driving her away? No, you are crazy. You are asking for the cure. For the dead, dead person, no way, right? No medicine. Even today, right? No medicines for, for the dead disease. <laughs> dead disease. So, but one time, she encountered, she met a very wise man. She is asking, as usual, she is asking a uh, cure for the dead. So, the medicine for the dead. So, the wise man said that. I do not know the medicine for the death, but there is a one person, there is a one physician, one physician who know, who might know, who might know the medicine for the death. Then she's very happy, right? Very happy. And he directed her to Chidawana monasteries, directed her to the Buddha, right? <laughs> Happily, with the full of hope, Kisa Godami went to Jedawara Monastery and go directly to the Buddha and asking, uh, showing her dead uh, son, right? Uh, is there any medicine for my dead son? That is what the, uh, what the Kisa Godami said. That's according to commentary, right? Pande, do you know the medicine 
four mind tests and what the Kisa Koromi said. And the Buddha said, Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So that me, is there any medicine? The Buddha himself died at the age of 80, right? Yeah. <laughs> All the disciples or the Buddha also died. No medicine, right? But here, the Buddha is saying, yes, I do, I have it. I have it. Do you think, is it a white line? It is a white line? What do you think? <laughs> because it's the Buddha, right? Taught by the Buddha. Huh? <clears throat> mm, special what, right? Special what? So, here, if, I, if we see uh, on the surface level, yes, I do. So there's no medicine for the death person. But here, the Buddha is saying, yes, that me, a white line, but look at the story, right? So there is a conditions, right? Then go and get master seat. Why master seat, right? She feel very happy, right? To get a warm master seat, it's very uh, very easy, right? She can get anywhere, and the Buddha said that. But that master seat must be the house where nobody died. So you have to ask whether their parents are still alive, right? And their 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 brother, their sister, etc., right? The master seat must be the house where the, uh, the house from um, uh, from the house where there's nobody dying, right? Nobody dying. But of course she she's crazy, right? She does not know how to think. For that reason, very happy and she right away uh, went out to the houses asking for the master seat, right? I went to get master seat. So uh, be back give master seat, right? The number taken, uh, she asked, Is there anyone who died in this house? Yes, my father died last, last, last year. <laughs> my son died uh, 20 years ago, like this, right? So then she threw away that master seat, moved to another house, asking master seat. So when she asked, Is there anyone who died in this house? We were asked, right? One, 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 uh, some of them will answer my father, some will answer my brother, like this, right? Now, she, be, she, she began to realize death is inevitable, cannot fight. She began to understand. That is medicine for her, right? That is medicine or the death, right? Medicine for the death or cure for the death. So she began to realize and she threw her baby boy uh, in the cemeteries and she goes straight to the border and she became Bekunis. Uh, at the end of the day she became Arahan. <laughs> Arahan, right? So when you want to read uh, story of Kisa Gaudami then you can read Tamapata, right? Tamabara. Uh, the story of Tamabara verse 114, right? 114. I think uh, full story, you can read, if you want to read full story, go to library. If you want to read the, how do you say, the summary of the story, you can read uh, the book of um, on Kishwe de Mananda. So it's very beautiful, beautifully written, right? So this is a, when we know, Bhante Kisagorami as, Bhante, do you know the medicine for my death sand? Yes, I do. Here, yeah, actually, I'm Ama Janami. This is a Pali, literal translation. Yes, I do, right? Yes, I do. So that me, if we just look at this two line, that me, white line, right? But the Buddha is not 
indicated, right? The real medicine for the death. So the Buddha is giving the medicine for the Kisagodami, right? So she began to know that death cannot be avoided. So everyone will fake death, right? One way or another. So that, for that, that is medicine for her. And she threw away her baby boy, became Bekuni, right? Became Bekuni. So her name is called Kisagodami. So we also have another called me, Maha. Pajabati Godami, right? Yeah, here is a Kisa. Kisa is uh, the one uh, skinny, lady, skinny girl, right? Skinny girl. And we also have another Kisa Godami, uh, the son of uh, uh, ministers in the Kapila Vatru, and she fall in love Siddhartha, right? So before Siddhartha uh, renounced the palace, at the age of 29, you know, he was all the time deeply thinking, right? So when somebody see him, look like he's not happy. So Kisa got me think that uh, Prince Siddhartha not happy because uh, his, his wife, um, the sword around, is a pregnant. For that reason, he's not happy. But he, he fought and left. Right? He thinks that uh, uh, the minor prince that will turn to her. Then she write poem and he, uh, he, he recited those poems. Right? So when the Buddha came back from, uh, uh, from the garden, right? From the garden, he normally chant those poems. Right? After hearing one of the poems, uh, so the Buddha uh, the prince said that uh, like very much, you know, the usage, uh, the what, uh, the usage used in the poem, right? Nebuta, the what Nebuta, right? Nebuta. So for that reason, he gave his uh, necklace as a reward, right? And she did that. Prince said that for in leper. <laughs> but at that the same night, Prince said that left the palace. So the, uh, her name is also Kisa Gordami, right? There's a two Kisa Gordami. But this one is the one uh, we normally uh, know it, right? We normally know. So for that reason, uh, so when, even when we're using telling line, a white line, white line, so I think we have to use, uh, how do you say that? We have to use, um, um, Skillfulness in speech, right? Skillfulness in speech. Right? Skillfulness in speech. So there are many many examples, right? Many examples. Question? <laughs> it depends on your motivation. It depends on your volition, right? So here, the Buddha motivation is not actually referring to literally. So the Buddha is referring to the medicine for the Kisa Gordon, right? Because, because of her son, you know? So she depressed and become crazy, right? And then the Buddha gave the medicine for her death son. Killing, I will kill, right? Regarding with the KC horse trainer, right? Regarding with the KC horse trainer, I will give you the, the link. Where is. In Gauranikaya, chapter 3, so the number, triple 1. Easy to remember. Sorry, four or five, uh, three or four, I forgot. Eh? Three or one of them. Chapter three or four. So, in a very good story, very good sotas. <coughs> it talk about skillfulness in teaching, right? The Buddha is very skillful. <coughs> okay, up to now we have learned 
three unwholesome bodily actions and four unwholesome bodily actions, right? <clears throat> All these bodily and bodily actions come from our mind. For that reason, mind is for Rana. So the Buddha said that Chaitena Niyati Loko. So this world is uh, Niyati, how to say, the created by the mind. It's very important. This world is uh, created by the mind. The same environment. Some are happy, some are not happy. The same food, some are happy, some are not. The same clothes, the same quality of clothes, some are not happy. Right? Some are happy. So we created, our mind created our, 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 our world, right? The way we see, the way we hear, right? It's very important. Some be bad. <coughs> Some people see half of the glass of the water, the, the water only half, right? For pessimistic, they will say, I don't have full of water in the glass. They do not see half of the water in the glass, right? Optimist, uh, pessimistic. Optimistic, they say, I have. Uh, I have, I have all the water, right? I have all the water. <laughs> so it depends on the mind, right? The same have all the water. But if passing, take it that drinking water and drink it. <laughs> we can call that passing realistic. <laughs> it depends on our mind, right? But he missed it. They will say, I have only have all the water, right? But optimistic, I have half of the water, right? They do not complain. They appreciate what they have. But some people are very realistic. They drink it. <laughs> mind is a forerunner of everything. Our mind created, right? But um, the first verse of the Mabra, number one, mind is forerunner of all phenomena. Or everything, we can see that everything. Mind is the chief, the mind made. If one speaks or acts with the wicked mind, because of that, suffering follows one. But here, speaks me, we have a speech, right? So because of the wicked mind, we will use four type of unwholesome speeches, right? Because of wicked mind, and we will we will use three type of bodily actions, right? Everything based on the mind. For that reason, the Buddha said, "Mano pobinga madama." Mind is everything, right? Mind created. Just as the we follow the hoop prints of the ox that draw the cart, right? And the, as a Singaporean, I don't know whether you know Bola cart. <laughs> if you haven't made it anywhere, you will not know it, right? Or young people, it's really young Singaporean, they will not know it. You <laughs> see, example, very, uh, can be, how to say, can be see, how to say, it nowadays, right? Bola cart is uh, becoming rare and rare, right? Even in our village. So people, they say they are bullock cart, they say they are ox, and they buy the machine, they buy the machine, uh, begin to change, right? By Singapore, I think, no bullock cart, right? No bullock cart. No, but you, you still have a cow, right? Cow. Only if you, is there any cow? Yes, cows. In the zoo. <laughs> uh, one time in Singapore, we do the cow in the dairy farm. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no bulaka, right? No bulaka. The MBB will not know it, right? No, yes. For that reason, so we have to use a relevant, uh, relevant uh, simile. But second one, a second verse. If you are talking, uh, if one speaks and one acts with the pure mind, the Buddha said, with the pure mind, because of that, happiness follows one. Pure mind, right? Pure mind. Just as our own shadow follow when we go. That is a specific, uh, you know, very relevant uh, example. When we are going uh, in, the, in the hot sand, right? Our own shadow follow. Just like that. So our own good and bad camera will follow, right? Will follow. So yeah, what I want to point out is the importance of the mind, right? Mind is full runner. So we have a three mental actions. For that reason, to understand three mental actions is very important, right? Based on that, we are performing wholesome and wholesome bodily and verbal actions. So we have three mental actions. Number one, covetousness, a paita. Number two, ewe, yabara. Number three, round view, nature deity. So these are three mental actions, right? In other words, in, according to Tamabra, we can say that wicked mind, right? Wicked mind, unwholesome mind, bad mind, right? So these three are the mental actions, manokama, generally occurring through the door of the mind, right? Through the door of the mind. Actually, they arise in the mind without bodily or vocal intimation. You are not shown with the body, with you are not you are not shown with the bokeh, bokeh, just in the mind, right? Kuvatasna, just in the mind, iwi, round view, just in the mind, right? So these are wicked mind. So if you are doing, if you are speaking, if you are acting based on those wicked mind, suffering will follow, right? Suffering will follow. You have a lot of suffering. The reason because of this one, right? <clears throat> Number one, covetousness. So this is according to the soda, right? And just copy from the soda. And the Buddha said here, someone is full of longing. He longs for the way and pro property of others. He longs for the way and property of others. That's Oh, may what belongs to another be mine. Right? Be mine. May this hope be mine. Right? May this person be mine. Like this, right? So, which is not belong to you, but you have longing for that. Right? Longing for that. Suppose, um, you are walking in a company, you are not deserved to have that pose, right? But you have a longing. May this, this pose, right? This pose be mine. So if you have such covetousness, such longing, you will speak, you will act, right? Toward that, that pose. So your action, your speech, depends on the mind. Based on the mind. First, depends on the mind. So that is called mental and wholesome actions, right? Mental and wholesome actions. Here, it is very important to know that you can long for your own property. You can expect, you can desire for your own property. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. But if you want to go advance practice, just like to attain jhana, to attain nibbana, even your own property, if you have a expectation, desire, attachment, it matters, right? But in normal daily life, 
if you have atta attachment, if you crave for your own property, nothing wrong. You love your children, you love your husband, your wife, your family, your house, you like your house, you like your car, you love your job. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? You're not breaking this one. But this one is longing for the property or other, right? Property or other. Here, the property doesn't mean not, not only the world, but also everything, right? So you get married, but if you have a longing for another one, another person, right? Another person. That is covetousness. If you laugh, if you crave, and if you like your partner, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. Stay okay, stay okay. But after your marriage, so you crave for somebody, and you let somebody that is longing for uh, the property or other, right? Property or others. So I think uh, that is called covetousness. So actually, uh, the dictionary um, give the definition of covetousness as a wanting to have something too much, especially something that belongs to someone else, right? Someone else. Suppose uh, you do not you do not deserve uh, how to say political post, just like a prime minister, prime minister post, right? Prime minister post. But you long for it, but you don't deserve it, right? If you have covetousness for primary post, you will use any method, right? You will speak, you will act any method. In earlier time, even the K, right? They keep their opposite uh, parties. So everything comes from the mind. Mind is very important, right? For that reason, so we have to practice to have a pure mind, right? Pure mind. If we are acting, if we are speaking with a pure mind, then happiness will follow. If you have a lot of longing for the property of others, suffering will follow, right? Suffering will follow. <clears throat> covetousness is indecent or unrighteous greed unrighteous greed which crave for the property or other people here the property means wealth, possession popularity that's right, right? some people want to become popular they were used Every method, whether it's righteous or unrighteous, they will use every method, every tactic, right? It is called covetousness. Bali, we call it Wisma Loba. <coughs> you know Loba. Actually, if we look at from the Nibbana point of view, every Loba is not good. <laughs> but if you have a Loba uh, to your own property, right? Thing that you belong to, it's okay. It is called Samat Lova. I think it's good to understand this word. Actually, Sama is a uh, event. Uh, wisdom. Not even. Even or without T or T. We mean, uh, how to say, very. Not even me, an even. Bambi, Bambi rope. Huh? How you say in English? Event, right? Not event, right? Literal meaning of Sama is the event. Or, how to say the uh, sama weather. Weather is very stable. We sama weather me, uh, weather me, uh, the weather is all the time changing, right? All the time changing, like this. So, actually, uh, we can, of course, we can translate as the righteous and unrighteous. Here, sama me, righteous. 
with mommy and righteous. So if you are, if you have a craving and attachment to a, to your own property, it is called righteous greed. Normal, normal daily life, right? Normal daily life. But if you are <coughs> longing for the property of others, which not belong to you, so that is called unrighteous or wisma, right? Wisma. <coughs> wisma greed or wisma love. It is a famous term in Buddhism. <coughs> wisma love. And you can have attachment and craving to your own property. But if you crave for if you long for the property of other people, it became wisdom and love, right? And righteous greed. Indecent, right? Indecent greed. Which crave for the property of other people, right? So there are two factors to complete a full course of obedience. Number one, being the property of other people. So that means if you have craving to the property of other people, right? If you crave for your own property, doesn't matter, right? Stay accept acceptable. Number two, longing it for oneself. So you long for yourself, right? So if they, uh, if you complete all these two, uh, it became a full cause of a beja, right? <coughs> so this is the what the uh, what the book said. This one, right? Page number 207. <coughs> Even though greed arises for another's property, it does not become a full cause of action unless one gives right to the wish to take possession of that property. You saw a house, right? That belonged to another person. But you like it. You like it. It is unrighteous, right? Unrighteous. But you have desire to take uh, to take that possession, right? That house, right? So th that, that became a beja or longing for, longing, right? Longing, covetousness. So different degree of unwholesome actions, right? Different degree of unwholesome actions. <coughs> Question? No question, right? Abstinent from covetousness. He has someone is without longing. He does not long for the way and the property of others. Death. Oh, may what belongs to another be mine, right? There's no such longing, right? No such longing. Is it abstinent? Abstinent from. <coughs> another one is Ewe. Yapar. Ewe. Yapar. As you all know that if we have a covetousness, a beja, so we are likely to commit stealing, right? Stealing. So this one belongs to another person. Then I have a longing, right? If it became mine, I'm very happy, right? That's a covetousness. Then that mine, right? State of mind, negative mind, is the seat of stealing, right? I will steal it. Right? I will steal it. Therefore, mine is full ran of everything. <coughs> the second one is Awe. He has a mind of Awe, an intention of hate. Thus, may these beings be slain, slaughtered, cut off, destroyed, or annihilated. That is the a strong desire uh, to kill sentient beings, right? To kill sentient beings. So that is called a way. <coughs> so according to this one, according to this one, if you have a, a negative mental state toward yourself, right? It's not a a way here, right? It's not a a way here. But of course, it is another another type of a way, according to. Um, uh, the A4 Nobel Path, right? A4 Nobel Path. And then in a sort of study class, I will, I will, I will, I will teach a different degree of, uh, different degree of, uh, 
to finance, right? <clears throat> this one to what other people, right? But uh, the A way and the way for part, not only A way to what other people, but also to what the weather, the places, even to what you are safe, right? So different degree of unwholesome actions, right? Unwholesome mind, right? Unwholesome mind. So now you are, uh, when it is raining, right? If uh, raining cats and dog, you feel irritated, right? You cannot come to the classes, you feel irritated, right? <laughs> That's the type of AW. Away toward the rain, right? The weather. But according to here, according to the, this one, so anger or irritation uh, toward the weather is not included. Only other people, right? A different degree. But in the Nobel for Park, there is also a way, right? The opposite of Abhyapara is a way. A way here means not only only toward another people, but also everything, right? Including oneself, right? Including oneself. So we have to know the degree of our sensations, right? A way is hatred, dosa and desire to harm others. Uh, Kuvadesna is a law, right? But here is a dosa. There are two factors to complete a full cause of action. Number one, being another sentient being. Sentient being, right? Another sentient being, not to what you said. Not the weather, not the place, right? Not the place. Not the object, right? The thought of harming is sentient being, right? So it became the full cause of action, the full cause of evil, right? Must be a sentient being. See, the opposite of evil is, he is all good way, good way, right? And his intentions are free of hate. Thus, may these beings live happily, free from enmity, free from affliction, and free from anxiety, right? Very beautiful, very good way, right? Very good way. That is what we call loving kindness, right? What we call compassion. So, when we have a compassion, a loving kindness to other people, right? And we will act, and we will speak with a pure mind, and happiness will follow. So if we are speaking and acting <coughs> with the wicked mind, right? With the wicked mind, sufferings will follow. <laughs> sufferings will follow. For that reason, Chaitena Niyati Loko, mind create the world. The same place, the same house, the same environment. Some are happy, some are not. Smi some are smiling, some are frowning. <laughs> mind, depends on the mind, right? So even our say, right, sometimes we are happy, sometimes not. The same environment, the same place, depends on the mind, right? So if we have a pure mind, a positive mind, I think we have, uh, happiness will follow, right? Happiness will follow. Question? Any question? No question, right? Okay, let's uh, call it a day. Yo vada tamba varo anujesu sakyamu. Thank you.
ตตัมโมเมนสารนัตโมเปนิยาทาชาตินามะอาภะลามะหุสัตตุสุสุสิสุปุริสายุกิสุอาทาชะปุกัลตามาตาสัตติสังกามิมังสารนัตโมเปมิสัตตุสัตตุสัตตุโอเค thank you so much